in Daniel and the Revelation, we have the beasts, same beasts, but in Daniel, it's a lion, it's a bear, it's a leopard, it's the ten-horned beast. When we come to Revelation, we see this conglomerate beast, which has all these features in the one beast. This is the way this whole thing has grown into one structure. One followed on to the other, to the other, until it morphed in itself into this beast, which had a body of a leopard. It had the mouth of a lion, and it had the paw of a bear, and it had ten horns. It had all those features of what Daniel had described. And it spoke of them all coming up from the sea, and the winds of strife drove upon the sea. So this is talking about the nations as they strove one against the other. And these are persecuting powers. Now, the beast which we see in Revelation 13 has a time period attached to it. There are three beasts that are the enemies of truth that have a time period attached to them. We're told that they ascend from the bottomless pit. In this respect, three beasts against God's people and against God himself. And of course, on the other side with the three beasts is Apollyon the destroyer or Lucifer. So you have this contrast between truth and error. And so if we understand that the commandments are at the center of these prophecies because God has revealed to a commandment keeping people then we can start to understand what this means in actual fact God has done this pictorially so it's pictures for dummies because we're not too smart but he's made this in such a simple way that when we start to look at things through a creator commandment keeping God reveals through his spirit those things which are actually in fact simple God hides from from us until we really want to know the most simple and obvious things John is in vision in Revelation 13 verse 1 he gives this description I was standing upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns upon its horns and on its heads it had the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and its feet like unto the feet of a bear and its mouth like unto the mouth of the lion and the dragon and remember it, the dragon refers to Satan that's given to us in Revelation chapter 12 gave him his seat, his authority and his power and I saw as it were one of its heads wounded to death and the deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast The beast which we're speaking of here, conglomerate beast, makes up those universal kingdoms that went before it. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and those animals that represented those kingdoms. Babylon, the lion, Medo-Persia, the bear, Greece, the leopard, and this nondescript beast, Rome, which crushed everything underneath its feet. It had the ten horns. Now the Roman church become this power. It was a persecuting power. Like Rome that went before it, pagan Rome, it crushed everything underneath its feet. Everything that was heretical to it. And then we have from this a deadly wound. The deadly wound was received when Napoleon was in power in 1798 when the Pope was placed in prison. But it says that deadly wound was healed. The deadly wound was healed in 1929. So few speak of this prophecy coming to fulfillment. So in 1929, the
the papacy through Mussolini, an agreement made with Mussolini at the time. They received their estate, their power, wealth was given back to them. So in 1929 a prophecy comes true and then it says, And all the world wondered after the beast. Now it was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Here we have that time period. It's mentioned elsewhere. Seven times in fact it's mentioned. That's its importance. So we need to understand what this is about. The 42 months. Or 1260 years. Or time, times and half a time. So remember that the different ways this, this is placed. And in prophetic time, we have a day equivalent to a year. In this way, we can read a day representing a year, how that the, time, the Bible has used this method to span the ages, to bring us right down to our present time. It will continue for 42 months. Now this particular date is hammered right into place. Hammered. People dispute it because they love the beast. They love the power, the beast power. But let me tell you that the God of heaven recognizes legal documents. And Justinian the emperor gave power to this persecuting power, the Bishop of Rome, to, to get rid of any threats, and they were Aryan threats. He had the legitimacy by the, the signature of the Emperor to act according to his own will and have his own power, and he established his own state. And in the end, he was telling who would be Emperor and who wouldn't be not, so... He went, he assumed a position higher than the emperor, that which is equal with God. Now also, this power, this timeline, continued until 1798, and another law is enacted, it's Law 8 with Napoleon, where Napoleon says to give up his estate, the Pope refuses, so... A legal document is drawn up in which his estate and his power is taken away. So by legalities, by the recognition of human law, starting in that 538 and ending in 1798, we have this time period identifying this beast power. And it's also identified again by one of its heads was wounded to death. Identified again, the deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. Also, identified again under the little horn power for the attributes, speaking great words, whereat the saints the most high shall think to change times and laws. This is a very important one. This power has its own times and laws opposite to what God has. It's at opposites to God's law. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. This power says the first day, the day of festivals, the day of man's reasoning, to use this day, this day for ecological reasons for the family, because this is the popular day. Also the laws of the, um, the times and laws involves calendars, it involves doctorates and degrees. It involves uh, sciences. These are all false. Or shall we say, the mixture of the false and true making them false. So we have one pitted against the other. That one will be seen in opposites to what truth is. The truth is the tree of knowledge. And we have the opposite the tree of good and evil. So here we have described 
this persecuting power whose deadly wound was healed, whose time period was given to identify it, and it regains its power. The dragon gives him his seat, his power, his great authority, and he exercises his authority against the liberties of mankind. He exercises his authority against God himself. In the preface of the King James Bible, we had a note from the interpreters to King James, which said that deadly wound would not be healed, talking of the papacy, speaking directly concerning the papacy. Why so? Because now the Bible was given in the language of the common people to the common people, for them to read, to have a knowledge of God. So, but what did the Bible say? In Revelation 13, the deadly wound would be healed. So we see that the roots, the history from where we come has been taken away. The Jesuit order was the only order that was petitioned by the Pope to be disbanded. 300 orders, but it was the Jesuit order because they caused war between the Catholic countries, first starting with Portugal and Spain. And so they were thrown out of these countries and their order was disbanded because of the pressure that the Pope was getting to do so. Also, as we mentioned, the papacy was dealt a blow. In 1798, Napoleon, through General Bertha, the Pope was placed into prison. Now, the deadly wound was healed. Mussolini saw to that in 1929. And with it also, the rise of the Jesuit order. Now, the Jesuit order has its stronghold in the USA today, the strongest power on the globe. So we find in Vietnam War, Holy War, and all the wars that are carrying for, say in South American countries, they team together against the communist power. So we have this um, dual hegemony that's um, risen, that um, is going to be the main globalizing power. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And they worshiped the beast, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. He that hath an ear, let him hear. He that taketh captive must be taken captive, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. The book of Revelation is in fact very simple. It contrasts Christ on one hand and Lucifer on the other, a system of true worship which God recognises and the false. In the false system, we have a false gospel cannot overcome sin, will not make reconciliation for iniquity, anoints the unholy one. In the true system is the very opposite, of which Daniel spoke of, which I'm referring to here of chapter nine, shall put an end to sin, put an end to sin, to bring in everlasting righteousness and to anoint the most holy. Jesus is contrasted and true worship against false worship. So in this chapter, in chapter 13, the world is being brought to a point where a decision has to be made just before the final appearing of the true Christ.